Hi and welcome. So today we're gonna look at how to get started with the DOP infection solver thingy that we did here. And uh, in order to do that, we're gonna do something really basic. We're just gonna look at reaction diffusion. So we're gonna produce something that looks like this. So first off, we're gonna see how this works in 2D. So I'm gonna start by dropping down a grid. I'm gonna make that, I'm gonna change so we have a smooth wire shaded. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do this five by five maybe. And I'm gonna scatter some points on this, maybe a hundred thousand. And then I'm just gonna do a can just group something here. So let's do something. Let's just do a base group. This is fine for sure what we want to do. So we're just going to do something that look not with that tool, but with that tool. So we're just going to do something like this. Something that's roughly like that. Cool. So here we have some groups. And then I'm going to drop on a wrangle and give these points density because the solver works over density. That's the main attribute that we work on. So if we're giving them a density of one, we can then drop down an infection initialize. And what we should see here is density and did I forget to use the group? Yes. So put in group. And now we see that we have the density there. That's good. So what we can do now is we can stop around that network because everything works within DOPS, which is quite nice. So what we need here is we need a solver, which is called Infection Solver Core. And we plug that into the output. And the solver requires an object. So we can just do an infection object here. And we plug this in, hopefully we will see this. So here we see our density and nothing else. So in order for reaction diffusion to work, we just need to plug in reaction diffusion. The default here is 40 blurring iterations, which I think is way too much for our lowest kind of quite densely packed thing. So I'm going to bring down to 10, I'm going to bring next neighbors to 10, and I'm going to bring down proximity radius to 0.1. And what we get is a reaction diffusion. It works very nice. And what you could do here as well is you could also bring this up to 20 instead, and you will get a more low frequency kind of thing going on. And yeah, this is pretty much it. <coughs> Very simple. Uh, we have two options here, density-based or growth-based. And the density-based is recommended if you just do this solver alone. The growth-based is if it's supposed to work in conjunction with other solvers, microsolvers. So yeah, that's pretty much it for doing it in 2D. So now that we know this, we can start looking at how to build this in 3D instead. And that's also quite simple. Uh, it's not that big a difference. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to have a sphere to start off with. So this sphere should probably be a bit bigger, so we have it's approximately the same kind of uh, scale on this. And we can also give it a little bit more uh, columns and rows. And what we're going to do then is we're just going to do an ISO offset of this. In so order to scatter points inside it, we need to make it into a volume. Or we could do it other ways as well, but we that's how we do it here. And when we scatter now, we will need more resolution for this because it works in free axis. So if we just start off with the hundred thousand, that will be quite coarse and not very detailed. But in order to get the principles, we can do that. So what we're gonna do now is wanna group this, but I wanna group inside. So in order to make it a little bit more interesting than just using a bounding sphere, I'm going to do two spheres. So the first sphere, I'm just going to say it has a uniform scale of 0.5 and it has a radius of 1 on the x-axis. And then I do a copy of this, which has a radius of 1 in the y-axis and 0.5 in the x-axis. So I'm happy with that as my group. If we merge them, we can see we have this kind of thing, and that will then be those particles. So in order to do that, we do a VDB from polygons, and we just bring up the resolution a little bit, so we have it, it doesn't really matter. And we have done that, we can then uh, make a group here. 
So we plug this into the second input and we change from base group to bounding regions and we change the bounding volumes and we change the points. And now we have this grouped. Uh, it's gonna quickly save. There we go. And what we can do now is we can give this some density. So we're just gonna do a wrangle, we're gonna use a group, and we're just gonna say at density is equal density is equal to one. And density is like I said the main kind of attribute we're working on. And what we can do then is we can do an infection initialize. And we see here also that we have other uh, attributes here. We don't really care about those for them. Uh, we have movable, which is the amount you can move, density, which is the amount of density we uh, source, and it's multiplied our, by our density that we already have. And it also has a max density, which is set at one, so it can't go over one, and fuel, which is the amount of density it can, it can give birth to, which is also set to one. And that's fine, and all of these can of course be scaled by other attributes. So when we've done that, we can drop down a dot network. What we do here is basically the same thing. A Domino Solver Core. I plug that in. An infection object. Plug that in. And what we see now is this. And it's kind of hard to tell here because it's 3D and it's uh, all these black particles in the way. So what we can do is we can go to visualization and scale that over density and bring it down to zero for those ones. And then we only see the particles we're actually working on. And when we drop down reaction position now, uh, we probably need to dial in the values quite a lot because this is so small and it has so far few particles that it can't really find any details. Just run this now, just grow as a blob, you see. So that's not what we want. So we bring down the blurring range to maybe eight. Let's see if we can keep that at point 0.1 and we'll bring Dux neighbors to 7 or something. And we we'll see if that's enough. It started out a little bit as a blob now, but as you will see, it started getting holes after a while. You can see here that we actually get something that is quite reasonable. It's not super interesting, but it's also very low res. So we can see if we can tweak this a bit further. If we bring around the bring it just to 5 and maybe bring this down to 0, 7 and bring the next number to 6 maybe. No, it dies. That's the problem. If it can't find stuff, it will die off. Let's try 0.8. Okay, we're close to it. We bring it up to 0.9 then. Here we go. And now we get more details in it. But it's kind of coarse and kind of not really as intended. So we're gonna bring this one up back up to 1. And then we get yeah we get a better result here. And this is quite okay, but and I mean we have to pretty much convert it to a VDB in order to see what's actually going on. But this is quite nice. And if we were to drop down, uh, what we could do afterwards is we can blast off the ones without density. Is less than 0.1 maybe. And we don't see them, but now they're actually gone here. So we reduce it to only the particles being used. And if we do that, we can then do a VDB from polygons. But as you will see, it's quite... Uh, we don't see anything here. And the reason for that is that we have a p-scale. So we could either... Not polygons, sorry, particles. So what we can do here is... We could either uh, delete the p-scale what we also can do is we can actually look at, because what the solver produces for us is this. It produces a detail attribute of the average distance between particles. So if we use this, we can actually get it to work without any, that much hassle. So what we do here is we just look at the detail, what we look at, which is uh, the blast. And we look at the PT average distance. And then it just wants to zero because it's not a. So now it almost works, and we bring up particle scale to two here. Okay, maybe we need to bring it up to three then. Four? Okay. So it's very coarse here, as you can see. It, it's not really working. So we could also divide this by two or something to get a little bit more, and then we can bring this down to two. But still, it's super coarse. 
and not really fun. But this gives you a fast idea how you can work with it. So if we were to tweak this in order to get something that looks actually looks good, uh, what we could do is go back and actually scatter some serious amount of points, like go back here and scatter maybe uh, 1.5 million instead. Uh, let's see, there we go. That's 1.5, right? I don't want to do too much. Yes, that's 1.5. Moving up away the max points. So this scatter will take a little while. So when we have this scatter, of course the group and everything works as well, but it's kind of hard to tell because you see, yeah. So what we could do then is we could go back to start frame and when we jump into solver, we can then of course tweak this a little bit more. So we can afford a bit more blurring now because they're more closer to each other. So I'm just going to bring this values around a little bit and I'm going to run a few frames which will take quite some time because it's really quite high res now. So we see start things starting happening here, it's not just a blob. So I'm just going to do like this and I'm just going to do a file cache here. Reduce the frame amount to 100 and just cache this and see how it looks. And now the caching is done and we can take a look at it. So let's see how it looks. So now we got something like this which is quite more high res and quite more interesting I think. It's the player window is a little bit slow but yeah. So yeah we have something that looks quite cool here. It grows out to the end here. So what we can do now is we can plug this in to VDB from Polygons and we have something a lot better. And uh, what we could do then is we could probably maybe think this down to one. I think so. And what we could do as well, we could also like do a VDB reshape SDF and just dilate it a little bit and then do a VDB smooth SDF and maybe I smooth it down and what we get is this done which is quite nice and what we might want to do as well is when we get here to the end we might want to cap it so it doesn't so we get a more smooth end here I think and that's quite simply done as well we can take our sphere we can bring it down here we can do a VDB from polygons again and we can just uh, use our second input here as a reference for the size and what we can do then is we can do a VDB smooth SDF to get it a bit smoother because we didn't really have the resolution needed let's do a radius of okay radius of four I guess so now we have something smooth and then we can do a VDB combine and use this not that that and that and what we can do here is we can do an SDF intersection and we see have this cut off, which looks nicer, I think. And when we're done with that, we can do a uh, convert VDB. And we convert to polygons. And we have something like this. And it takes a little while to calculate each frame, but it still looks, I think it looks quite nice. So that's how simply you can do these kind of structures uh, with just solver. And for my render, I also put on a grid and just some lights. It was very basic. But that's not really the focus here. So thank you for watching. Bye.